right now probably have about 4,500 online students and uh, about 35,000 students in general uh, who have access to Blackboard and need Blackboard support. Um, so they come to our office and, uh, you know, just a, a little background, um, we uh, initially, to take an online class, um, we would make students take a quiz uh, before what well, we use a solar system called Panther. And uh, what we found was students just did not register for our classes at all. Uh, we had to cancel about half our uh, hybrid classes and probably about 25%. So we found that when we have a gateway to online classes, you're going to be canceling a lot of your classes. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the students who take online classes, they are not completely dead set on taking an online class. They're deciding between an in-person class and an online class. And they just, uh, if, the gate, if there's too much of a gateway to take an online class, they're just gonna say forget it and not take it. Um, once we uh, got rid of that quiz, we found out that, you know, uh, almost all our classes are getting pulled up, even the uh, hybrids that just weren't very popular. Um, and uh, so what we had to do is we had to just kind of increase uh, our support um, at the e learning center and find ways to just support students as they're taking the class. Uh, there was a study in the University of Washington that said, uh, you know, the two ways to inc uh, decrease attrition in your online classes uh, is faculty training and student support during the class. Those are the two major ways. Uh, otherwise, um, everything else, you know, and, and we're going to show our orientation in a second. It's very similar to uh, Dr. Davis. But like the, the, the orientation at the beginning, it's, you know, it's good. It teaches them how to use the tools. But you'll still have students in the middle of the semester who will disappear uh, for two weeks or three weeks. And it's not a technology issue. And it's not, uh, it's not an issue with um, you know, not knowing the material either. It's just a personal matter. And they're just kind of like, well, I'm sorry, I just have to be away or something like that. It just, it just happens. So you need somebody who can contact them. You need somebody uh, who can uh, reach out to them that's not the professor, who is busy with, you know, 25 other students and several other classes. And uh, that's what we try to provide at the e-learning center. Uh, as well, um, you know, by uh, having a one semester long uh, kind of training period for professors, we try to set up a way in which, you know, students can, if they're out for a week or two, they can just somehow jump back in. Um, so this is our orientation. Um, and, uh, you know, right now we haven't released it yet. Um, and basically, very similar, uh, it's students have to self enroll on Blackboard. Now, we have tried several different ways. We're all dealing with CUNY first. We've tried several different ways to try to figure out how to get these students into this course automatically. And one idea we had was to put all students who are in an online course into a concurrent e-learning course uh, on CUNY first so that they'd be automatically registered onto Blackboard. The problem with that is if a student is in a course on CUNY first and they drop all their courses, they may not drop the e-learning course, and then they lose their financial aid. Um, so it, it's just, it's, you know, and we have 4,500 online students, so we can't check to make sure that all these students are, are registered. So that was one idea that we had that went out the window. Another idea we had was if maybe we can you know, you put a course like that and give them a grade to make sure that they take it. Again, similar problems. Uh, CUNY first, it doesn't differentiate between, even if it's a non-credit course, it doesn't differentiate between all your courses. So a student has to go in and drop that course or, or they'll lose their financial aid. And uh, that, that's just the, the major issue. So we try to make it mandatory, and all we can do really is just tell professors to um, give student like a couple points at the beginning of the semester when they show the certificate. We similarly have a certificate at the end of it, and uh, we... Uh, we, have, we kind of work closely with the faculty because uh, you know they typically have all gone through our training. So since they know us, they feel comfortable doing it. We say it's mandatory, but again, there's not much teeth behind it because a student can just not take it, and the professor doesn't encourage them to do it with uh, you know with a couple of credits uh, or points. Then there's really nothing we can do about it. 
Um, you know, we're, this is something we're thinking about uh, and just trying to see if we can just get students to do it. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's a process. Um, we will have a fully online program very soon, uh, probably within the year, uh, where we will have a, a fully online degree for um, community college students, which will be nice. Um, and, because again, we have, you know, a ton of classes, but, uh, you know, it's, it's something we need to think about. And perhaps for that, we'll be creating a, a more uh, robust orientation for those students. And it'll be easier to track them because they're our students. However, just we've got 35,000 students just all over the school. So they can just get the in and out whenever they want. It's too difficult to track them and it's too difficult to, uh, you know, to force them to do these things, especially when we want to keep enrollment up, which is a, a really big deal. Uh, which of the MCC is trying to make 25% of its classes online. Um, and uh, we, we probably are a few years away from that, especially because you know the the in course classes are also increasing. So you know it's we're chasing something. Um, now again, students, we we typically have all our classes when we train uh, faculty. This kind of is what the what it looks like when in all our online courses anyway. So we try to kind kind of keep it pretty close to that. The only thing is, I just put numbers on it, and so students, when they get into Blackboard, they know uh, which one to go through first. Uh, similarly, these are adaptive releases, and uh, we give students kind of, uh, if you can just go back real quick, um, the, we give students basically what we think are five or uh, the most important things they need to learn in an online class to succeed. Um, and uh, we give them little quizzes and little uh, uh, handouts that we think will, will help them. At the same time, we make sure that they're using all the tools. So it's basically, we just try to trick them into being in a sandbox environment to, uh, for Blackboard. Uh, and at the same time, give them like really good tips and tricks on uh, online courses. And this orientation, even though it's for online students, uh, there are many professors who, uh, who just use Blackboard, who make their students take it anyway, because they want their students to know Blackboard. Um, and many of the tips, like time management and downloading uh, documents, you can use in any class. Um, so you can go with uh, time management. So the, you know, this is just a, a story from the uh, newest News of World Report. Student reads it, and then takes, goes to the discussion board, and then takes the quiz uh, at the bottom. Um, yeah. Uh, and once they finish that, the second uh, folder gets released, and uh, they can start uh, doing that. Um, and you know, I think the orientation probably takes about an hour, uh, and we worked on it with all our faculty, um, and we probably started working on it about four years ago. Um, and uh, we got input from all our online faculty. What what do you guys want your students to know? And uh, that's basically where we came to. And at the end of it, students get a certificate. Uh, they can you know, take a screenshot, show it to the professor, get points. Uh, probably, I would say, half of our faculty actually do make it mandatory in their classes. And you know, they tell the student, honestly, just contact the e-learning center. They'll figure it out with you. We are open seven days a week. Um, we have two uh, full-time student support coordinators about 10 uh, work studies who kind of do simple password resets. Um, uh, me and Brian uh, typically handle um, stuff like duplicate counts and uh, things where we have to get into uh, uh, you know, students' blackboard or you know, student calls, they're panicking because they missed the quiz, they think, or something's not there, we look into the course for them. Um, our uh, attrition rate actually is pretty good. Um, typically, you know, online classes, the attrition rate will be 10 to 15 percent worse than your in-course classes. Ours is generally like basically <coughs> five to ten. You're still going to have again, if the student doesn't have to come into class, you're always going to have a worse attrition rate than uh, your in-course classes. But uh, you know, because we have you know we have a lot of support, um, and students, if a student just like falls behind and a faculty member needs us to reach out, we try to reach out to them by phone or by email, or if a student. Um, Again, maybe not, can't get in touch with the professor, emails the professor, uh, doesn't get email back. They typically call us 
and they're just like, they just need somebody to talk to, and they're just like, I think I missed a quiz, uh, and we're like, you did? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's pretty, you know, uh, cut and dry. Uh, but, you know, we're just like, the quiz would expired at midnight, this is what you did, uh, this is what you did wrong. And uh, just tell your professor, I contacted the e-learning center, I missed the quiz, is there any chance I can make it up? You know, we need our hands off and all that other stuff, but that generally helps the student feel a little more comfortable taking an online class, because otherwise, you know, I mean, we don't, faculty, they're not working 24 seven, like that's not the idea, you know. Uh, so, you know, you can't be answering emails your whole entire life from students. So uh, having a center where students can kind of call and just like get a couple of tips, get somebody to help them look at something, uh, and, and again, we can log into every online class and uh, uh, walk the students through it. Uh, it helps. Uh, it helps them feel a little more comfortable. And it has helped us in greatly increase our online classes because if they were a disaster, nobody would want to do them. Um, so uh, that's the uh, orientation. Um, and, uh, you know, again, another thing we're, we did, we used to have a 2.0 GPA requirement to take an online class. We got rid of that. Uh, we're getting rid of that in uh, either summer or fall. Yeah, I think the fall. Fall. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think that, again, <laughs> it's going to create more problems. But, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, again, I think for us, it's like the, the president was like, we want 25% online classes, whatever it takes. And, <laughs> you know, we're just like, all right, uh, well, you know, we had ideas. And, um, you know, so taking away that gateway where the students have to take a quiz, that increased enrollment a ton. This 2.0 GPA requirement, that's an increased enrollment. Also, uh, CUNY First is so finicky uh, with the 2.0 GPA requirement. Um, we're, all CUNY, we're all using CUNY First, and so I apologize if you're not. Uh, but, like, this, I think this is worth knowing. It's a, uh, if you have a, a student who's a first year uh, freshman, they, don't, they do not have a, a GPA, right? So what happens is you need to create a kind of uh, an exception in CUNY First for freshmen, right? But what if that freshman dropped out of the classroom and then wants to take a class in the second semester? No longer freshman, <laughs> but they no longer they don't have a GPA. So these are problems that we have, and it's like we have to go in and make like find out like, what why did you have a GPA? And it's like oh you dropped out of classes, and you know I guess I guess that counts as uh, having a null GPA as opposed to a zero GPA. So we let them take the classes, then we have to go in and individually add them. So th those are the problems that you'll have when you add GPA requirements uh, with CUNY First. Again, I think CUNY First is better than our old system, which the, for example, in uh, Panther, our old system, if a student didn't take the quiz before they took the class, uh, before they uh, were trying to register online classes, they would not take the class at all. Our biggest selling point for online classes is just seeing on the, on, the on the schedule when you take your classes. Again, students like, I would say most students, they do not think about taking an online class until they actually see I can register for an online class and put in their uh, basket. Um, we're getting more and more students who are like, go to other schools who are thinking about uh, taking our online classes because they're just like, oh, I go to NYU, I want to take an online class real quick. But that's actually a very small percentage. Most of our online classes go to just students who are just kind of like, you know what, I just want to take uh, English 201. You were the last available slot. I'll figure it out. Um, so <laughs> the second thing was we decided to do, like, completely redo our website. Uh, and just try to figure out a way to make it easier for students. Uh, Brian, if you want to go ahead. Yeah. So one of the one of the things Alex mentioned that we're open seven days a week. Uh, so Alex and I run the center, you know, seven days a week, and a lot of the questions that we get are are just repetitive. And so what we did was relaunched our website. Before there was so much material, there was it was just cluttered. There wasn't anything important that a student could find within three clicks. Uh, it also wasn't mobile friendly, and so we got rid of pretty much the whole entire website and built it from scratch. The, Beginning of the semester? Yeah, uh, that uh, way. So we also have full control of, over all the content on the website. So we get to update our e-learning courses, if you can click on mm -hmm. that. So Alex and I update this information for every semester. Uh, we show you what type of course. Once you click on the actual link to a course, um, it gives you a description. The professor, special instructions. If it's a hybrid, it lists the days and times that you're going to be attending the class. Uh, if it's online, you still have one or two uh, meeting dates, as you can see. Uh, so this reflects CUNY First. We work with the registrar 
building this for CUNY First and for our own site as well. Does it pull from CUNY First? No, we actually we do it uh, manually. Uh, and the reason we do it manually is because a lot of times professors will want to teach a hybrid or they want to teach it fully online, but they're not prepared for it, so it gets dropped. So courses are constantly being added and pulled from, from uh, the register on QD First, so we have to just stay vigilant on making sure our records match theirs. And we've tried to get it from CUNY First, and it, they're just like, there's no way, you know? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I'm sorry? Is there a reason why you can't get an automatic, automatic feed? feed? It's because you have to sign in. You know, I... I, well, what's up? Yeah, you, you probably had an answer. I, I don't know what the policy is because I, I don't run that. Because ours all have to calculate, so I don't know how it, I know it's pulling up from QD first. So just make sure you talk to us. Talk oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh and then another thing, uh, there are special instructions that we try to put on, on it as well. And sometimes it doesn't look like... That was the only thing. It was like, there is... Uh, it does... You can get it to load, but like it's... There's something a little... I, I got to look at yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, but back, yeah, back to your question, I mean, we've, we've tried to work with the registrar to populate our website directly from the other feed, and I mean, it's just been quite a back and forth just to get the courses correct on CUNY First in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, we'll have a professor go to the registrar and say, hey, I'm teaching a hybrid, put it on CUNY First. Well, we never train them. So we have to actually go to, you know, the, the registrar and take it down and then, so this is just one way we have control over what gets put up uh, for students to see. Um, another thing that we we do is we work with faculty and we we, uh, we teach faculty how to use the technology, not just in Blackboard, but also um, any sort of technology that could help them in their course. That doesn't even have to be fully online; it could be on campus. Um, so we have workshops which range from Photoshop to uh, anything Adobe to Microsoft Suite to how to design your Blackboard course that looks appearance, uh, appealing to students um, and Pretty much anything that they walk in with, it's, it really is a non-stop uh, or one-stop technology center that we offer to faculty as well. But if you could just go up, Alex, a little bit. So for the student information, click on student mm -hmm. information, we list uh, the frequently asked questions that students that will always email us with, uh, call us with, or come into our center with. We also have... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> these are, I mean, these are things, you know, some, some of the emails that we do get uh, are pretty ridiculous, but yeah. people are going to ask them. Yeah. Uh, if you could scroll up just a little bit. Legitimately, frequently asked questions. <laughs> so, we have direct, uh, direct links to Blackboard resources as well, how to activate your email. Uh, anything that you need to participate as a fully online student or a hybrid student, we give all the resources there. Um, one of the things that Alex and I do have the benefit of running a support center is when well, something like the e-learning orientation that we offer, the week before courses start, we email every single student uh, in a hybrid, fully online or an online course. We email them how to log into their course, to check their email, if they don't know how to access their email, where to activate it, Wait, and we email also... Them. You email them to their BC students to email them how to... No, no, we don't, we don't, we do their primary email from CUNY first, so it could be a Gmail. So we pull all their records from CUNY first. Um, and so we also um, give them a direct instructions on how to log into the e-learning orientation. So we have good crowd control of who enters our courses, how the courses are developed, and how Alex and I help maintain the attendance and the, uh, the work submitted on these Blackboard courses. You so email every single student? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. but, and what, how many students are we talking about? Uh, well, I mean, what? It varies because one student can take multiple online courses. Yeah. I don't easily. And they're responding to you, and you're responding. No, no. I mean, they, they don't typically respond. So we just it's like a. Email. Actually, they never respond actually <laughs> to that email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Many of them find out they're in an online course when we email them. By the way, so. No, most of them. You know, a lot of a lot of the time is just to make sure that their CUNY portal works and that their Blackboard works. Yeah. Because they can't access. That, I mean, at the start of the fully online course, if you have a duplicate account or something wrong with your, your social security number, it takes a couple days for CUNY Central to, to deal with that issue. So we try to... <laughs> 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 yeah, she knows. <laughs> so we built, you know, this website, we built the orientation to help streamline our services 
uh, for students, that there's that there's always information provided, that there's practice that they can do on their own, and that there's a support center that's always available for them. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's about it. Any yeah. questions? Yeah. Yes. Is there a particular time, like either before the semester or during the beginning of the semester, that you see the most activity? Yeah, the first two, three weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that sometimes the first day is like uh, like what before a tsunami when like the water just goes back and it's like eerily quiet, and uh, then all of a sudden like later that day it's just like uh, it's slammed. I would you know probably we're extremely busy the first three weeks just nonstop students coming in. Um, and Usually after a break as well because no one checks their blackboard after break. Oh right, that's right. Homework. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They forgot I'll everything. Back. Yeah. I'll come back and say hey. Uh, I missed this exam because I just didn't do it. Yeah. So it's, it's usually once the semester starts, when the uh, semester starts to end, and break periods in between the holidays. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, All right. Thank you, folks. Yeah. Thank uh, you, guys. <laughs> yeah.